I feel like with this podcast episode, we got to address the obvious right away. So first off, this is the first time I'm interviewing an avocado on the podcast. So first off, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having an avocado on the podcast. <laughs> no problem at all. Uh, but second, I, I do on a serious note, want to say to everybody uh, who's watching this right now, when when you first initially hit me up about coming onto the podcast, the idea for me was, I think it's really interesting of like when I first started the podcast, I wanted to have NFT project founders on because I wanted there to be a higher level of transparency for uh, somebody who was buying that NFT or, you know, debating buying that NFT or selling that NFT for them to be able to hear from the founder directly and decide from there what they think of that founder, what they think of the you know goals with the project and everything like that. And so it's never a direct endorsement when I have somebody on the podcast. I just want to ask them questions and, and have you decide as a, as a watcher at home what you think of their answers. And so then when, when I was approached about this opportunity of having you on, I was like, okay, I'm interested because yes, one, I think it would be interesting to hear from somebody who created one of these coins and how it all came to be and hear the back end of things, hear what you guys are doing, all that kind of stuff. And then for other people to hear this conversation, decide from there what they think of what you guys are building and, and all of that. And again, it's not a direct endorsement. I also, just for the record for everybody, do not own any guac, will not be buying guac before this comes out. Like I, I will not be doing anything like that. So just for transparency's sake, um, you know, this is not me pumping my bags or anything like that. It's this to me is an interesting conversation to have, have you out here and have this conversation and let people decide from there uh, what they think of everything. So uh, there's my little disclaimer to start this episode. But uh, but again, thank you for coming out, man. I'm, I've been, uh, yeah, I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. It was uh, the journey to get here. Excited to be in LA and, and chatting with you. I've watched a lot of your content and figured this was a good way for the intern to make his first in-person appearance there we go there we go yeah it is that is where did you find that costume dude uh you can find anything online this is true this is true <laughs> is, was this an amazon purchase it was an amazon purchase you know amazon yeah. they really do have just truly everything on you there. can purchase it at this link right here <laughs> <laughs> there we go yeah you too can be an avocado uh no that's that's amazing when you first told me you're like dude i'm gonna i'm gonna either dress up as an avocado or have an avocado mask or something like that. I was like, yeah, you really can find anything on the internet. So, yeah. um, but, uh, okay. So for, give me a little bit more of your background. So before getting into NFTs, crypto, all of that, what was your background and then how did you get into NFTs and crypto from there? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm synonymous, the name, uh, Guagin turn number one, I'm the essential founder, um, DAO contributor, you know, development, main development contributor for the guacamole ecosystem. Uh, my path in crypto slash Web3 or whatever you want to call it, uh, it's changed over the years, started in about 2014. Uh, back then, mainly interested in Bitcoin because that was the only kid on the block. Uh, I remember when, you know, Ethereum launched in 2015. I did a lot of importing uh, slash exporting Bitcoin miners, ransom mining facilities back in the day. I remember when like the S5 came out and then the S9. GPU mining with Ethereum and, and ran several different mining facilities as well. Uh, but I actually have a formal education in communication design psychology, uh, which I've put to use uh, both in Web2, uh, which we consider in our industry more of traditional companies, and then Web3 as well. I think that I went uh, full time career path kind of changed for me to put that education and those skills to use around. 15, 16, right before we got the massive first bull market with the ICO craze uh, with Ethereum and all the new exchanges popping out, first retail boom. And uh, since then, I've actually worked and contributed for or consulted for a lot of exchanges that you'll know, wallets, payment systems, protocols, DAOs, uh, Dino Coins, which you would probably consider them now from previous uh, cycles past and have done a lot of work over the years as well. Uh, with, with within those ecosystems. I also uh, take part in product design, uh, not only for what we'll talk about today with you know refining a UI and UX uh, for crypto onboarding, but actually uh, high frequency trading engines, arbitrage strategies as well, which were very like super profitable in early Solana. Uh, so I've kind of had my hands in a lot of different things. And, uh, and you know, we're here today to talk about guacamole. And I think one of the things with essentially with guacamole was I had my hand in in all of these different ecosystem partners, you know, was around for the, the original DeFi summer, you know, when Uniswap pop, popped off and Sushi's vampire attack and and a bunch of other events that happened and then witnessed the rise of Solana and all the coins there. And, 
you know, we had the, the fully diluted value memes that, that Sam brought to the table and a bunch of other things. And I think my experience over the years, um, I always keep like a notebook with me, right? And I have a team that I've worked with for the better part of a decade now um, in this industry, uh, within esports as well, uh, which was a little, we'll talk about how that brings gaming to the table for Glock, working alongside companies like Activision and Blizzard and, and other things like that. Um, and over the years, we kind of jot ideas down in this notebook and, you know, what works, what doesn't, what's fair, what's not, how things should be run. And guac guacamole was essentially like the culmination of, um, you know, our experience, our, you know, testimony within the industry. And we wanted to essentially like put this thesis at the end of the day, guacamole is just a thesis, right? It's an experiment. Um, and we wanted to put this to work and we're here today, you know, talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I've been around the block, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. And that was one of the things that kind of impressed me when we, when we first talked is, um, I'd heard a little bit more about some of your background and everything like that. And I was like, okay, this isn't just some, you know, somebody at home who's just decided I'm going to launch a, a meme coin. And then it just happened to get traction. Like you're somebody who has an extensive background in crypto and everything like that, which is, um, yeah, incredibly, incredibly impressive. So here, here's what I want to know from you. So first off, like where did the original idea for Guac come from? And then how much of it was inspired by uh, Bonk? You know, because the way I look at it is to me, and I could be completely wrong on this, but I don't feel like there was ever really a, a, a huge meme coin that really gained traction in the Solana ecosystem until Bonk. And then, you know, Bonk obviously is now elevated past that. I don't I don't know what you call it when you're no longer a meme coin, but you're also not, you know, you're not Solana itself. Like, what are you t technically just like a Solana ecosystem staple coin? Like, that's kind of how I look at Bonk is like they're always going to be here. They've they've proven the test of time. And they've also built great product that, you know, continues to uh, benefit the team and make them make them money and then benefit the ecosystem by us using bonk bot and, and things like that right so and then they did the obviously the bonk misactivations and all of that so how much of it were you inspired by what bonk has done and then i guess where did the original idea from guac kind of formulate from there and kind of walk me through the timeline from when it, you guys created the idea to begin with to the actual launch of, of guac yeah so i think uh like i said uh previously in my introduction we've been kind of formulating the thesis of, of what the guacamole project or ecosystem could be or could look like for uh, a few years now, uh, but weren't necessarily ready to put it into action. I think with the rise of Bonk, uh, first off, before, you know, preface uh, in terms of a huge fan of Bonk, uh, I think that, you know, we can thank them, uh, you know, the internal contributors and the distribution at, at one of Solana's lowest moments to bring volume, to bring visibility and uh, bring excitement back to the chain, which was definitely needed as well. Um, I have a huge asymmet asymmetric bet on Solana, so I'm excited for when things like that happen uh, to the ecosystem as well. I, I've been a huge fan since early days when, you know, it was just Soleil and Radium and, you know, Project Serum and, and nothing worked the way it was supposed to. And it was a terrible UI or, or UX experience, and it's exciting to see it grow over time. But if you want to compare guacamole to Bank, I think that... Uh, tearing apart the general um, you know roadmaps or, or product offerings or how they go about things uh, with their you know with their setup their internal contributors their DAO etc they're very comparable uh, but I'd say that one of them there's essentially two main differences one would be distribution our distribution was drastically different than bonk and then the way that so everybody's familiar with the tools that bonk puts out you know bonk swap bonk or bust uh, bonk bot uh, you know, Bonks, uh, a bunch of different ecosystem plays as well. And with Bonk, they're all separated, right? So they're all like managed by different teams or, or different internal contributors. They find themselves on different domains and websites. And, you know, you have a main Bonk website, but then you have to essentially look for other things that Bonk releases themselves. And that's, you know, one of the good things about decentralization. That's great uh, that you have a bunch of internal contributors on this team that are kind of doing their own thing to move the Bonk ecosystem forward. And, and you know, that's what uh, you know, we look for when it comes to decentralization. Uh, but with Guacamole, we have a team of these internal contributors, but we decided to go about it a different way uh, because we'll talk about essentially like how Guacamole is formulated from like the ground up as an onboarding funnel. And when you're essentially making a, a or implementing a drastic change to how, you know, you look at onboarding from the, within the industry, we can't have products separated across 10 different domains, right? So what we do is you just separate it into two instances. So we have like our consumer facing app on guac.gg and then we have our DeFi app on guacamole.gg. 
And, you know, we have equivalents to Bonker Bust. You know, we're about to release the Guac AMM. Um, you know, we can talk about the, I think it's like 20 or 30 different features and products that we've released, but you can find each of them on either one of those websites. And we have a lot of cross navigation where like, if you want to do one thing, we'll teach you about it on one website and then you can implement it or act on it on another website. Or if you trade or, or make profit, uh, you know, on a game or on, you know, the latest meme coin, you can go and take that and buy something on the consumer app in the shop, like a gift card or a game or, or something like that. So we essentially wanted to aggregate all of these tools and more that, you know, that bank offers into just two suites that we can cross link back and forth between instead of having a, a new user or a new onboard that may be excited about an ecosystem have to look for something. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. So when you guys were building out all of this and kind of building out the roadmap, building out some of the different things that you wanted to create, uh, in, you know, an essential like full ecosystem, what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced with that? Because I, I feel like, I mean, at this point, the, you know, the thing is we have new uh, meme coins that drop on a regular basis, right? And so you're, you're constantly uh, competing for the same, um, you know, mental bandwidth that people have in this space to give towards different meme coins, right? So walk me through like, why did you guys decide to launch when you did? And what was your essential like launch strategy to make sure that you were able to, um, I guess, gain the traction that you were looking for right upon launch? Yeah. So I think the initial launch sequence, uh, we wanted to come in with a bang, right? And in our, our recent documentation updates and something that I've talked about, we essentially just launched disguised as a meme is, is the best way to put it. Uh, because when you look at meme coins or you look at uh, cultural coins or community tokens is are some of the ways that they're being described nowadays. Uh, there's the core thesis that, you know, the only thing that essentially matters for visibility, for, you know, the attention economy is community and community engagement. Right. So if we were to go backwards and launch our products first, it's harder to build a community. Right. But if you launch this community token, this meme token, and then introduce things after you've built your cult community, after you've gained that attention and, you know, pushed yourself forward. Uh, it's easier to introduce these topics and then have your community be excited about them, critique them, you know, provide feedback about them, things like that. And there was no better, you know, day to launch or no better week to launch than, than Cinco de Mayo for Guac, right? So we went full into the meme surface to start. Um, you know, if, if anybody was around during our launch period, it was, we launched like May 3rd, it was a stealth launch, a uh, fair launch. We put 94% of the tokens locked in a radium liquidity pool forever. I think that position right now is currently worth like a million dollars in LP. That's a central backstop to the ecosystem. And then the other 6% were kind of put aside for exchanges, bris bridges, listings, things like that. And we'll talk about what, what happened to those tokens and how they ended up in the DAO. Uh, but you know, our launch wasn't wasn't necessarily anything special. We've we've never paid influencers. Uh, we didn't, you know, go and tell people about it beforehand. We worked on it. I think, uh, you know, the, the thesis and the culmination, I think maybe early April is when we put like the initial landing pages together. And we had these plans for all these products uh, in the background. And it was uh, it was like aggravating, but at the same time, exciting, knowing what was coming and then just releasing this like one page landing website that was like comical. You know what I mean? Uh, because we wanted to come off a certain way to, to build that community, to incite engagement back into Solana, because at this point it had been a few months since Bonk launched. You know, the, the Bonk price is going down, you know, the dilution and, and community excitement because of, you know, humans have a short attention span. Uh, so I think it was not only that, but like the perfect time place to launch this. And our launch went off with a bang. Uh, you know, we had every single NFT community reaching out to us for, you know, allocations or, or airdrops. Uh, everybody was making social engagement posts to, to latch onto it. I think that uh, we, and we joke internally about it. The first three days of launch were like a Celsius fueled binge of tweets where we did like 1500 tweets within like, you know, three days, got shadow banned on shadow banned, you know, we're trending on Twitter with like millions of posts and all of this just for like a 6 million market cap coin. Right. So it was like interesting at the same time, because as the main founder, you also get like kind of an ego about it. We're like, OK, launch was successful. Uh, you know, let's jump into the next phase. But by the time we are ready to reach the next phase, we go back to the attention economy and guacs down and, and going down to like a two, three hundred K market cap, which happens with it, which happens with a lot of memes. Uh, but 
you know, during this point, we'll, we'll talk about those tokens now for the exchange in the listings wallet. You know, there had been a, a BitMart listing early on that we used some of these tokens for, and then the rest of the tokens were actually set aside. And what we decided to do, and, and this was always part of the plan because we want to decentralize the product. We, we want to put it back in, in the, the community's hands and help guide the ecosystem along the way. So what we did was we introduced the concept of the Avocado. Uh, so the Avocado was a uh, fully democratically set up, um, you know, governance inf infrastructure. Uh, we use Realms DAO if, if you're on Solana, most treasuries use it. But instead of having a centralized foundation or, you know, entity come in and say, this is how the DAO is going to run. You know, these are the, the foundational members. These are your council members. You know, you can only vote with your tokens. What we decided to do was scratch all of that take a week to educate people about the centralized governance and then introduce voting democratic voting on should guac be used for the governance token right how should governance work what should approval quorums be how should votes work should there be a council and the community voted yes to a council so then we had like two or three weeks of democratic elections for all of our council members as well where if you were interested you had to you know make posts do interviews tell people about your background uh what you could do for guacamole you know where you see the project going uh and how your background can like help with that how would you act or you know what would your demeanor be in the face of challenges uh are you around for the long term you know do you have skin in the game and that lasted for you know two or three weeks and then we had like a huge vote where we decided to like leave it an open poll and everybody in the community that had like a verified guac role could vote and we took the five the top five votes and they became our council right and and it's kind of cool too because like i had to do the same thing right so like i wasn't just going to say like hey i'm the founder uh, you know i'm i have an automatic shoe on on the council so i had to like talk about my background talk about what i could do show everybody that i wasn't just going to put a landing page up and then you know make it down hand it over to the community and disappear which happens a lot in the industry right it's community owned now <laughs> uh but it was it was exciting that the the community voted me in as well and i've continued to be like a main contributor and everything and and the leftover tokens after the initial uh, bitmart listing i think it was like three percent of the tokens which would be like equivalent to three trillion were donated to the dow and at that time it was like you know less than twenty thousand dollars and it's a position that you know we'll talk about how the economy works uh but it's a position that's grown into like millions of dollars on and off as like we use and rotate tokens between the ecosystem and do you know exchange listings and integrations and we've had six active dow proposals uh which makes us like one of the most recently active dows on solana as well uh, which is exciting too because we have participation uh you know i think our last dow proposal had like 11 percent of circulating supply locked in the voting uh, for our um, release to the market makers and exchange listing. So people were super excited about that. Uh, but we've also funded things through the DAO. Like, I know that you're going to be talking to the defenders. Uh, we funded a partnership with them where, you know, our avatar NFTs are protected by their protocol. We've done cross liquidity collaborations with Hero because we work with them on our uh, Riper Rotten, which is similar to Bonker Bust and our Crypto Futures product as well. So we locked 100K joint TVL and Meteora through our liquidity lockers for over a year together to form a, uh, you know, a collaborative development environment. So it's, it's nice to see what started out as a meme eventually become, you know, a true governance ecosystem. And then what we did was we took these products that, you know, we're about to talk about in both of our applications and made this full what we call essentially like a tokenized economy. It is. It is impressive. It is, I mean, it's truly impressive. And to me, again, like this is why I think this conversation is really cool because I didn't know most of this. And um, I don't ask a lot of questions before I have somebody come on the podcast because I always say like I like to have like kind of my organic uh, response and, and hear it for the first time when I'm when I'm on the podcast. And yeah, hearing all of this, I'm like, yeah, this is it's like rude of me to call it a meme coin or a shit coin or anything like that, because it, it discredits everything that you guys are doing. Like that's that's incredibly, incredibly pr impressive. And so. The, the question that I have for you, and you brought up multiple times exchanges. So I think exchanges are one of the things that, you know, every time there's a new coin, people are commenting in the Telegram or, or Discord or on Twitter, you know, when exchange, when exchange, when exchange. So can you explain to people, how do you get on an exchange once, you know, once you've gained a little bit of notoriety and everything like that? What is that process like? Yeah, so I think it all depends on the kind of exchange that you're looking to get on as well. 
Uh, there are exchanges out there that are, are willing to take any project's money as long as you want to pay them to get a listing. And that's great because it can help out with visibility and no names will be said. There's also exchanges that will list you based on, you know, your volume just to kind of attract users. Uh, but I would always say be wary and do your own research before you start pitching them to the community uh, because you don't want anything, you know, detrimental happening to the community as, as we've seen essentially over the last few years with bad actors within the ecosystem that don't even need to be named. Um, but the best way to go about it, I think, first off, you need to get yourself or, or start talking to a market maker. There are several within the industry. There are several that work in Solana. And these guys are going to be essential to making sure that liquidity is available on these exchanges because an exchange listing with, with empty books means nothing. If people can't essentially trade on this exchange, then you're only getting it for visibility in a, in a tweet. And what, if you're releasing a project or you know, you're founding a project, every move that you make, should, you should look at long term. Uh, so if you're looking at exchange listings, you know, talking to your market maker partners and things like that, you should be looking at what can this exchange do for us a year from now? Will this exchange still be a good bet a year from now? Or are we just going to use it for like a stepping stone to another exchange or, or upping our tiers, et cetera? And all of that, you know, every project has, has its own, own foundation and its own plan, and that's great. But we're just talking through experience because I've worked with these exchanges you know I, I've set up systems and, and high-frequency trading engines and have market made with the with these exchanges as well and you know have have talked to a lot of the the founding team the CEOs and, and been at events with them and everything and have close relationships and I think at the end of the day um, you know if you're looking to like up your game with exchanges uh, looking at tier one exchanges you know there's a specific way that we go about things with socials and I, I'm not a lawyer um, anything like that but you know, posting charts and talking about speculative price all day or reposting, you know, speculative uh, posts to your like your Twitter or founders only talking about price is like a no go when it comes to getting listed on higher tier exchanges, specifically if you're looking for an eventual American audience. Uh, so that's one of the things that like we don't do when we handle, you know, the way that we handle our social posts and, and things like that a very, very certain way because we don't ever want to come off as financial advice. We don't ever want to talk about the speculative nature of our token because that's secondary market dynamics and we have no control over that. Uh, and you don't want people to think that you do have a control over that. Uh, so after you've essentially like got this market maker and formulated an exchange plan, you know, you can fill out forms on exchanges or, you know, you can ask your market maker for introductions. Uh, the best thing is to work up the ladder, you know, start with a lower tier exchange and then work up the ladder to a higher tier exchange that will require more liquidity. And by that time, maybe you'll be okay within the ecosystem with being able to like supply this liquidity. With guacamole, it's a little bit different uh, for us because we didn't set aside any team allocations. We didn't set aside massive amounts for marketing. It's like we took 94% of the tokens and just said, here, trade with these forever. These are locked in radium. And then the other 6%, you know, ended up as 3%. And then that went into Dow control. So for us, every single move that we make and the way that governance works with us and, and getting listed on these exchanges is, you know, just talking about the last governance proposal is we released, uh, I think at the time we had built our treasury up to about 6 trillion guac through product revenue as well. So we captured another 3% of total supply, which was pretty impressive uh, through, you know, product revenue and, and, mar and um, you know, integrations and things like that. Uh, but then we released 3.5 trillion of these tokens to be able to cover a long-term exchange plan where we introduced market making partners. We've been talking to exchanges for a long time and we wanted to release these all in one go and work with our market making partners so that we could essentially like implement the system. So like part of this was, you know, fixing liquidity from the early bit, uh, from the early BitMart listing. And then a lot of people have just seen that, like we went live on BitGet and did like a bunch of marketing with them over the past few weeks. And I, I talked on a recent space about how like it doesn't end there. Uh, we have relationships, uh, you know, integration relationships with a bunch of tier one exchanges right now where on guac.gg, you know, we have a good relationship with OKX where you can attach an OKX account and earn rewards on the system. You can do the same with Bybit and we work with like OKX Web3 a lot as well and are doing a campaign with them. So it's essentially all about formula relationships, building a community. If you want tier one listings or if you want like higher exchange listings, you know, there are parameters that you need to that you need to meet. A lot of this is going to be market cap, volume, holders, you know, engagement. Uh, the way that your project can be looked at from a legal standpoint, uh, a bunch of different things. So that's like a very open-ended question. It all de kind of depends on like where you want to take your project, right? That's fair. That's fair. So, okay. So one of the other questions I have, and you, you see it all the time with uh, every time there's a new coin, is that people 
if the if the dev ever sells, it is the most <laughs> bearish thing of all time, right? And so how exactly I guess like and and I don't know what you're comfortable with talking about, but like one, how does the team make money? Like obviously I'm a big believer of like if you're working on something like you should be compensated for your time. So how do you do that in a way that doesn't become bearish FUD on the timeline? And then I guess like, yeah, how specifically are you guys doing it? And then how do you think how do you look at it for like other founders and everything like that? Like how how do you think other people should go about it? And what is the fair way to be compensated for your time without also causing massive amounts of FUD on the timeline and having people be like, oh, the dev bought at this price and they just sold it all. We're going to zero. And then, you know, next thing you know, market cap tanks. <laughs> yeah. So the whole dev selling, I think, uh, you know, it is a meme in itself, right? And it, it's something that you know, Ethereum, Solana, any any shitcoin ecosystem. That's something that gonna they're gonna focus on. With Guacamole, uh, the way that we did it, you know, going back to the no team allocations or anything like that. Anybody involved in the project um, had to buy Guac on the open market, like the rest of us. Uh, you know, the Dow Council they came in as just Guac holders as well. They never expected to end up on the council when when they bought their first Guacamole. Uh, and the way that we run it. And the way that like we build everything and going back to like the development team that's worked with me over the last decade is, and I, I've talked about this openly before, everything that, that we've done so far has been bootstrapped out of my pocket. Uh, if you go back, you know, and, and you look at like when I en entered the industry and the, and the changes in the industry since then, to expect me to not have made any personal money over the years to be able to bootstrap something like this would be, you know, kind of naive. Uh, and I've put six figures out of my pocket so far in, you know, kind of expanding guacamole, uh, integrating the new projects, uh, the new products and features, getting us the exchange listings, bringing on the market maker, you know, supplying USDC side liquidity so that we don't have to worry about offloading guac tokens because at the end of the day, uh, we have like an internal mission where like every act that we do or everything that we introduce should never have negative secondary market effect on, you know, never essentially sell guac to make something happen. Uh, and I continue to cover, you know, most of these costs. Um, and my goal is, and we'll talk about kind of how like the guac economy is formed and all the features and where like the revenue goes. Uh, but there are certain things within the ecosystem, like the guac shop, where it has to be separate from the doubt and has like a float system involved to be able to supply these products. That's something that will eventually probably help to fund development. We're also working on, on backend SaaS infrastructure that we're about to offer in uh, partnership with an older project um, that many may not be familiar with, but are full of you know dedicated builders. And a lot of the revenue from that will, you know, will be split and uh, help to cover our back end development costs as well. Uh, you know, my personal guac holdings, I, I, they're just a side. They're used for governance, uh, things like that. And it's exciting to, you know, see the, the ante anticipation, the participation from the community grow. And I, you know, from my point of view, it's just like a, a hold forever thing, right? So like there are several ways that, you know, other founders could make money off of, you know, if they had bought their or an allocation of tokens with like LPing it, providing liquidity, things like that, you know, making your liquidity off, uh, making your, your revenue off fees. You know, on Ethereum, you see a lot of like the taxes and stuff like that. And guacamole doesn't have any taxes. That's one of the things that like we didn't want to do. But with the introduction of token extensions, you can, you know, do token taxes and then have the taxes kind of pay for development funds as well. Uh, just be careful with that if, you know, that still results in you offloading tokens. Um, but the way that we wanted to do it with Guac, going back to it, you know, I will continue to bootstrap the product. We still have several phases of development uh, that will be bootstrapped as well. And, you know, some of the things that, that we're introducing uh, within both of the ecosystems, you know, will eventually hopefully pay me back <laughs> while providing, uh, providing uh, revenue from for the DAO as well. Sorry, it's a little hard to talk as an avocado. No, totally, totally. <laughs> I, I would say totally, uh, totally feel that, but I, I don't. I've actually never dressed as an we avocado. We can change outfits real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah, you got to be out right now. Um, but um, okay, so, so that makes total sense. So okay, so my question for you from there is. What, you know, obviously there's been a ton of coins that have gained traction over the last year, right? We just look at the last 12 months, obviously Bonk, obviously Guac on, um, on Ethereum. We've had uh, Pepe, we've had um, a Mog, we've had a, a bunch of different coins who've gained a lot of traction. Um, now getting further into kind of meme coin season in Solana and then also just like governance tokens. We've seen Jupe that's, that's gone crazy. Uh, we've seen, you know, GME, we've seen 
uh, used car. We've seen all these different things that have gained some sort of traction and things like that. Um, are there coins that you're currently inspired by? How much do you pay attention, I guess, to what other coins are doing, whether on Solana, on Ethereum, on, you know, uh, Bitcoin with, you know, everything that they're doing over there with BRC. So, you know, how much do you look at what other coins are doing and how much, uh, I, I guess, are there any coins that you're, you know, very impressed by in terms of what their team has built and, and kind of, you know, it's inspired you in some sort of way? Yeah. So I'd say that I'm terminally online, like a lot of other people in this industry. So I see and, and, and take everything. Uh, like a lot of other people, you know, bird eye is always up. I have new coin trackers when our tools themselves offer the ability to create new tokens and lock your liquidity. You tend to be very involved within the industry and seeing like what's coming out, what becomes popular. Uh, I think <laughs> a few of like my favorite ones that aren't guac recently was definitely used car. That, that is such a good meme in itself. Um, I saw that and, and actually laughed out loud, which was, you know, a good indication of it being a good meme. Um, you know, I have fat cats, so I like chonky. Um, and the way that like we interpret or, or intake information uh, as founders is essentially like looking at, at what works and, and what doesn't work. But at the same time, a lot of the, to the tokens, the coins that are coming out, um, you know, 90 percent of, of what you mentioned were just like strictly memes. Right. So like they help us to kind of see what happens uh, with certain strategies uh, with the tension economy. Uh, you know, we're in contact with a bunch of people from from the teams as well and, and offer actually offer educational material for a lot of these coins already. So like that we are on guac.gg, you know, our educational avocadomy, we offer how to buy guides for, you know, a lot of the coins that you, that you uh, were talking about. So they get this, uh, the search presence, they get these, these immediate guides that we algorithmic, algorithmically create for them. Um, but going back to like where guac fits kind of in the middle where it's like a playful branding, uh, me, like it's playful branding to kind of sit 50, 50 within like governance utility. And we can talk about that, but then also be considered a meme as well because of the way that we can market ourselves or brand at any time. So if you look at like the opposite end of things and you look at a bunch of like the newer tokens that came out specifically jupe was like the largest, one of the largest airdrops that ever happened from one of the most used, uh, protocols, you know, in the world on any chain, uh, we work closely with the jupe team, you know, We've integrated Jupiter V6 into both of our applications. We have Meteor Lending Vaults uh, on guacamole.gg as well. Our liquidity locker supports, uh, and for those of you that don't know, Jupe and Meteor are essentially like, you know, one and the same. Uh, we have Meteor liqui liquidity lockers for, um, you know, on guacamole.gg as well so that you can like create a Meteor, Meteor liquidity pool for your new token and then lock your liquidity away instead of like burning it forever. Uh, but I'm super excited about Jupe essentially, uh, but I'm also very, very intrigued by the speculative nature of JLP, uh, which is essentially Jupiter's liquidity token. And there's a lot of posts and, and comparisons on, on, you know, which one would be the better speculative play. Um, but JLP right now earns fees from their perpetuals markets, what, which I think Meow make a, made a, a post the other day where it was like when Solana went down and there was like $63 million of like open interest on their markets, which is insane for when they launched this and, you know, what it provides and everything. So to see the JLP chart and to understand the, the economics and dynamics behind that makes it like a good solid hold from a trading perspective or for like an, an investment perspective, not financial advice, just looking at how like the tokens themselves are designed. Uh, but when you look at Jupe, you know, releasing essentially as a governance token um, and, you know, understanding the way the industry works and, and the legal dynamics of everything, you know, there are only certain things that you can say about about a token and, you know, search for that, you know, Coinbase listing or that Binance listing or be able to like, you know, support things long term the way that you want. And I'm very, very excited about Jupe uh, when it comes to like the way that they've integrated the launchpad dynamics, uh, the way that they're talking about, you know, when we 10x, we'll do this and, and all of it's understandable, you know, but. I'm a little bit wary from like a speculative side nature of it, um, just from being in the industry for so long. But Jupe is going to Jupe, and I, I think that they're essentially building like one of the the best products, and we do find a lot of inspiration from them. Uh, both of our UIs, like on on you know comparing to Jupe.ag to Guacamole.gg, our DeFi suite, there's a lot of inspiration there. It's just that like we've decided to offer more than just like trading integrations, right? With like play and tools and, you know, launch your own, your own tokens and everything that we do is essentially permissionless where, you know, anybody can go on, create a token. Anybody can go and lock a token. Anybody can go and play a game and use any of our tools. There's, there's no one backstopping you or saying, whoa, like you, you need to wait for permission to use this as well. And that's one of the, the ways that like we kind of differ from them. Uh, but looking at it from like a utility play as well, a lot of utility, within the crypto ecosystem actually comes from third parties. Uh, 
similar with Guac as well, uh, you know, where we have a long list of native integrations or utilities that we've built. But then we also have a longer list of third party integrations where like you can use Guac here, you can, you know, earn Guac here, you can do this. And, you know, a lot of that applies to any larger token within the ecosystem as well. Where like Juke went live and within five minutes it was live for use on every other Solana DeFi or every other platform. Like we even included it in our play section, you know, play dice with Jupe, uh, things like that as well. Um, and a lot of it comes down to, you know, visibility and, and marketing for both of those platforms. But also at the end of the day, you look at the ubiquity of tokens, right? And this is one of the things that like we're looking at with guacamole where we want guacamole, you know, the guac token to be visible, to be used on almost every single DeFi platform, every single social platform that's available because all of these different platforms are, are different onboarding points. So let's say your first, you know, your first integration or glance at Solano is a social integration like SolarPlex, right? Which we, SolarPlex won uh, a hackathon that Guac had sponsored. So, you know, shilling one of our, our hackathon winners here, but you can tip Mint NFTs in, in Guac on their platform, right? And then you end up on a platform like Camino you know, when you get a little bit further into DeFi and you can see that you can, you know, lock lock soul in, in the vaults or, you know, you can do this on this platform and this on this platform. So it's like, you know, they have this singular onboarding point and then no matter where they go, they see guac. Right. So that is like growth hacking in itself. Uh, I think that like Jupe automatically got that. Uh, so it's really, really cool to see. Uh, but I know that there's a lot of pressure on that ecosystem as well uh, to essentially like not only continue to deliver what a lot of people consider the best products, but to continue to deliver reasons to hold their token uh, so that it doesn't end up something like Uni, right? Where it was just like a governance token that, you know, got vampire attacked by VCs and <laughs> withdrew funds from the ecosystem and things like that. So that's something that they, you know, a lot of people are probably a little standoffish about, but if they can, if they can roll things right, you know, I see Juke becoming like essentially one of the powerhouses of, of the greater tokenized economy. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, yeah, it's very interesting to hear your thoughts on that because it has been one of the number one uh, conversation pieces over the last, uh, you know, few weeks is what's going to happen with Jupe. Uh, you know, what sort of decisions do they make and, and how do those things affect, how do those affect the rest of the market? Um, how does it affect, you know, the speculative market and everything like that? Um, it, it's, it's, it's all very, very interesting. I'm, I'm excited to see how it plays out. Um, it's always never a dull day. That's, uh, that's for damn sure with all of this, but um, so on your end of things, how do you think about, you know, when it comes to like a governance token per se, how do you make a governance token sought after? Cause I think a lot of times the idea of a down being able to vote on things and stuff like that, I always kind of tell myself, I'm like, we still can't get in America a hundred percent of people to vote in our elections, which drastically affect, you know, the way we our our lives operate and things like that. We, we really can't get people to, to vote on local elections, which one could argue affect even more of your life. Right. And so again, when you take that to a digital version and now we've got DAOs and your ability to vote on different things, how do you make a governance token sought after where people actually, you know, one, want to own it and then two, want to participate in DAO votes and things like that so that they can actually affect the, the you know, the, the journey of where this, um, you know, protocol or platform or whatever they're building is going. How do you how do you make these things sought after and make people actually want to participate in, in uh, you know, DAO elements? Yeah. So humans are notoriously receptive to incentivization, right? Uh, so if you're looking at governance models or even comparing it to like a local election or a presidential election in any country, uh, you'll get the largest turnout when it affects somebody personally uh, or when that vote is going to determine, you know, how they would live their just looking at elections themselves, determine how they would live their lives, what their taxes look like, et cetera. And, you know, a lot of people will show up to vote because they have an emotional connection to it, which we play into like the psychological aspect of things. Uh, but when you when you apply the same concepts to the centralized governance with tokenization, you can look at the incentivization from two different angles, I think. So if you look at the Avaca DAO, which is, you know, the, the guacamole DAO, uh, like I mentioned before, we have this council. We also have an intermediary DAO wallet where we have the full guac economy, which is our features, our products, and, and all revenue is cycled to the intermediary DAO wallet to start, where if it's collected in guac, it then gets sent to the DAO. If it's not collected in guac, like USDC, Sol, etc., then it gets converted to guac on open market and sent to the DAO as well. Uh, but with this as well, the intermediary DAO wallet, that actually helps the council to kind of stray away from from 
pitching these DAO votes that necessarily don't need millions of dollars of guac in in the DAO governance you know staking uh, program to vote on like if it's something small like in like a smaller integration or, or anything like that you know you don't necessarily want to be pestering your community to to vote on something that may not directly influence or apply to them right so when you have a governance vote um it should have you know you should market it out as like this is what how it affects you know the average user this is how it affects guacamole this is why the council is pitching it this is why it passed council approval and this is why we're now introducing it to you in an unbiased manner for voting right so like we go back to the the centralized exchange and market making proposal that we had of course people are going to vote on that because people love the speculative you know humans are driven by greed right so you release a doubt proposal that mentions things like this and everybody wants to vote because they think it's going to do x y and z which is why we saw the largest turnout for that vote but then you look at some of our other votes where it's like you know should we mint the avatar collection in in solar guac right and that would have let even though it passed approval it would still have less votes because it doesn't necessarily affect as many people on like a day-to-day -day basis um, and then you have other things that you know going back to jupe and, and some other things that like we've done with governance it's like jupiter just said that if you you know if you um get involved in the DAO proposals for like the, the LFG launch pad and things like that, that like you will uh, possibly receive an allocation of, of the tokens from the launch pad or like receive this and this. And that's incentivizing people to participate in governance. Right. And we've done similar things where like, you know, if, if you participate in governance or like anybody that's voted has like received extra guac back or like received like free plays or like we've airdropped avatars to them as well. And that's for like some of the, the less viable, the less uh, popular, um, you know, psychological proposals that, that humans or avocado themselves wouldn't see as you know greater influence to their daily basis um, but then you look at as well um, you know if you're talking about how do you grow a governance token uh, we've taken kind of a, and I'll speak just essentially for guacamole here uh, we've taken like a unique aspect on this where like every single thing that we do every single feature or product that we introduced will either use guac itself or drive revenue back to the DAO so that we can scoop guac on market right because the DAO the DAO Treasury's main goal is to continue to acquire guac. We don't burn it. Um, you know, we don't do anything like that. What we do is we have a revolving economy where we, we take this guac back in and then we use the proposals to vote on new integrations, right? If we took it in and then burned it, how are we going to support a new liquidity pool? How are we going to support farming? Because you have to remember with our tokenomics, we didn't have any tokens set aside to do things like this. So we have a, a fiscal responsibility to the community through the DAO and introducing these products and these revenue to, to essentially funnel the guac back in so that we can continue to grow the ecosystem, which is completely abstract and, and inverse of a lot of other projects. But on top of that, we've also introduced use cases and utilities for guac. So, you know, with the recent V2, we can look at like a few things themselves. So like portfolio roles and, and verified, um, you know, dynamics depend on your guac holdings for the connected wallet. Uh, Chatamoli reach outs, uh, you know, is a good way. And you should even look into Chatamoli as well. Um, it's a good way to like make introductions where, you know, you would be financially incentivized to reply to somebody. So it's good for business networking. Uh, all of the all of the reach outs and everything are paid in guac for that as well. Uh, raffles, you know, we don't do the typical like NFT raffles and things like that. We do raffles for like games, gift cards, you know, digital items. Uh, all of that is done in guac. And then you look at like the, the DeFi side of things and, you know, we, we supply trading incentives in guac, trading replates for guac. You can play with guac. If you want to use the lockers, you need guac. If you want to create a token, you need guac. If you want to use this tool, you need guac. So guac has become, like I said earlier, not only ubiquitous between third party platforms, but everywhere you go or everything that like you do within the guacamole interface also utilizes guac, right? And we've designed it in a certain way because like if you don't do things like this, or have like a decent govern governance structure, you shouldn't have a token, right? The, the token shouldn't exist. So the way that we've essentially formulated it, and you also have to, be, before I get too far into that thought, you also have to make it so that it's not a wall when you're designing the platform. Uh, you know, you need X, Y, and Z to use this product. That's great, but like, are you making it easy to acquire X, Y, and Z to use this product, right? So the way that we've designed things is like right on that interface, you know, it shows you how to acquire guac. It links to acquire guac. Um, if you don't have a wallet, you know, it takes you to a guide that explains everything. If you haven't ever bought crypto before, we have a buy with card option straight on both of the websites as well that we partnered. You know, everything that we do is also playful branding. So we partnered with a company called Kado. 
that has an avocado as their mascot to do our onboarding as well. Uh, so everything's like very, very thought out and they're, you know, a great onboarding platform that's made it super easy for us to do this. Uh, but, you know, you look at these, these overlap between governance and utility and integrations and visibility and growth hacking through, you know, partnerships and, you know, tokenized integrations as well. And, and you know, if you're, if you're thinking about doing this for your own project or if you're like in the middle of it, you need to look at like long-term plans for things like that. And because, you know, if you're just a meme, you know, and you have a silly website with like a dupe swap module included, you know, it all comes down to the attention economy for you and like how long is that going to last and like you need to keep that up and that is a lot of work right so we've decided to put all of that attention all of the resources into essentially developing you know going back to explaining this like tokenized economy where we've built this whole ecosystem this whole economy ourselves where guac is you know used in every facet of it so it's not just only a governance token anymore you can incentivize to learn about guac you can redeem your points for guac you can redeem your points for other things you can use the guac for this that uh so you know a lot of planning goes into that and we just released our our new updated roadmap with other integrations for guac as well uh that we're excited you know get into too there we go there i mean yeah you truly have a full ecosystem so again if people want to check out any of the things that you guys have built they either go to guacamole.gg or guac.gg am i right on that correct yeah so taking a part and and you know if it's time to finally talk about our applications uh we can look at it from a top-down view where you know we go back to the the aspect that we offer two different applications we offer them separately for a reason um so you have to look at the whole guacamole ecosystem, and we kind of explain this in our docs, which would be docs.guacamole.gg on the first page. I think it's like the platform introduction where you can go through and learn about why we've done it this way. And then at the bottom of the page, we have a funnel, right? So you look at some of the things that I've done, you know, outside of Web3 with, uh, with, uh, or even inside Web3 working with these exchanges, wallets, payment systems, protocols, et cetera. And a lot of it, you know, one of the things that they over, always overlooked was a lot of the things that I learned, you know, through formal education or working outside of this industry. And it's things that, you know, essentially aren't tackled even by like the largest players in the industry as well. And that's understanding like base marketing tactics, right? So one of the ways that we've introduced based marketing tactics, you know, optimized SEO, traditional marketing funnels, things like that um, is essentially we have the top of the funnel and that is like the content that we produce, the way that it's that it's uh, integrated into the systems, you know, looking at, you know, keywords, terms, search results, things that, you know, things outside of the industry that could lead to within the industry based on like, you know, basic retail um, growth interest and things like that. And that's where they land on guac.gg. So guac.gg is essentially, you know, what I call the consumer application uh, because it's like not the DeFi application. And we have a bunch of integrations and features on guac.gg that um, internally we, we kind of label as design mirroring. So when you land on guac.gg, it feels familiar to somebody as like a typical website for somebody that's never interacted with crypto before. But the goal of that website is actually teach them and onboard them into the ecosystem with easy to understand concepts and terms. So like if you're looking at like, what can I do with crypto? Well, there's a shop right here where you can like buy games, you can buy gift cards, you can buy things from other users on the shop, you can enter raffles, things like that. And these are easy concepts to understand for people because they're not looking at like, what does API mean? What does impermanent loss mean? What is yield and like lending and borrowing? It's like, no, I have this token and I can get this cool game that my friend's been playing that I want to play with him with. It's like, oh, and then my friend stopped playing it. I can resell this game to another member in the community and then take those tokens and buy another game. So it's like essentially like Amazon and GameStop online, like as one small feature of guac.gg. But then we take this and we add social elements to it as well. So we have introduced Pitfolio, which is like a, uh, a public portfolio, uh, you know, tracker, social network in itself. And uh, we've taken like a unique aspect to this where like everybody that signs up, you know, you can connect a Solana wallet and then you have like a private tracker where you can add exchange accounts at, like OKX and Bybit if you're a little bit more advanced. Um, but then you also have like your public Solana holdings, your NFT holdings. You can make an NFT your profile picture. You can follow other people, have a following. This is where you would engage in Chattamoli like I was talking about. You can also, you know, reach out through Chattamoli, tip users as well. And uh you know, this also results in like search terms for like specific users as well. So like, let's say you're trying to like grow your brand and you're making like a bunch of calls or something on Twitter. And, you know, <laughs> we all know how that goes with like a bunch of influencers <laughs> and things like that. And it's like, did he really buy this? Or like, did the team pay him or like things like that? So like 
using Pitfolio in itself provides people with like a sense of transparency where like if you're not using something like this and you want to be like an alpha leader or a group leader and like you're you know I, I command the community to like uh, essentially like demand better transparency from people that like they want to follow and Pitfolio is an excellent representation of that but it also is like simple and effective when it comes down to it as well and then you go to Chatamoli, and this is essentially, uh, it's a very, very unique product in the fact that like, you know, there was Soul Link that, that Tully was talking about, some other things like that. And Chatamoli essentially like, you have a public portfolio page, and let's say I want to like make an introduction to you, but you know, most of the time Twitter DMs go to spam, LinkedIn DMs are a complete mess, <laughs> disaster. right? Oh, yeah. They're a disaster. I haven't checked them in years. And uh, Ch Chatamoli essentially lets me pay you for for an introduction in your time so like you know we understand that like time is money friend right have you ever played world of warcraft the little goblin when you click on him to sell things like time is money it's like that that has stuck with me over the years and that's kind of when it comes to chatamoli it's like you know you have this following you're busy all the time and you know somebody is going to send you 10 bucks just to say like hey look at this or like hey can i have a few minutes of your time right and you can like respond to them or not but it's going to show your response rate on your portfolio page so that people know if they reach out to you are you going to respond to them or not right so that's kind of exciting and it was a little social dynamic that we built and then you know we, we were talking about the marketplace and how you know that specifically introduces familiar concepts but then i think that the two favorite things that are kind of overlooked right now on guac.gg itself are going to be fresh finds and the avocadomy so fresh finds just to keep it simple is a combination of product hunt and reddit for solana uh, so anybody can go in and submit a project and, and screenshots and information the community can upvote it discuss it i think we have like 15 or 20 projects over there you know uh listed already if you own your own project nft project meme project anything like that make sure to submit it to fresh finds uh guac.gg it's like submit a find or there's a link on the fresh finds page for you um and then it, you know we'll go through verify from some information to make sure you're not posting trying to post scam links or something like that and we'll post it for you and you can have your community engage and we're actually giving out rewards points and doing like tracking for which wallets or users engage with certain posts right now for like future airdrops and delivery delivering that wallet data to like those protocols so they can like reward incentives as well and it's super exciting because you know you have this ongoing discussion for these these products and these protocols and it helps them not only to like gain social engagement and like have other things to post but you go back to like the traditional funnel that we were talking about with like seo and it provides them with more search results and like valid discussion on what these plat platforms are you know images and google images you know bing yahoo things like that uh chat gpt even picking things up uh, etc and it you know it's content production on a community scale and then you have Avocadomy, which is essentially like the learn to earn. Uh, so if anybody like has the Coinbase app or even like Asset Dash, things like that, they have, you know, learn sections where you can complete short guides to essentially earn reward points or coins or, you know, tokens on Coinbase, et cetera. And we've taken a unique approach to this as well, where like each guide is essentially like five steps that's broken down in a very simple non-crypto related term for people. So like, you know, we talk about you know burning uh tokens or nfts to redeem soul and you know we equate that to like juicing an avocado right so it's very very simple terms and like playful and fun terms for people to learn about crypto education because you know guac.gg at the end of the day is meant for crypto non-natives um or people of like all experiences to feel comfortable and confident depending on like your knowledge and your scale of integrations to like use pitfolio and eventually like copy trade other users on exchanges when we launch that or like just like go and like spend your recent meme coin gains on you know a gift card to like buy your girlfriend or you know uh, your wife's boyfriend uh, uh, something new <laughs> right <laughs> um but I think walk.gg is like very exciting it's first iteration we just wanted to like get the marketplace out get raffles out to kind of show that we were building uh but it's also become a test bed with version two of a lot of like the back end things that we're doing so you'll see a new login system as well yes i know that we only support phantom for solana right now soul flare backpack and a bunch of other wallets are about to go live and we'll talk about like why that is right now and we've actually built our own um proprietary wallet connector system for no code systems where anybody's going to be able to install this plugin um to like bubble webflow wordpress anything like that and immediately build their own e-commerce solution their own decks their own yield platform anything with simple commands that essentially like pop out of this plugin as as actionable workflows and this is something that we've been working on for a while in partnership with that other company which we'll eventually announce publicly um 
I'm super excited about that because we use guac.gg as the test bed for this technology. There's a lot of things like in the background, even with like, you know, the, the copy trading um, integrations that we have where like, let's say you want to attach your OKX account and offer copy trading on your portfolio to another user, right? And the ability to like do that with it within industry standards, you know, risk management systems. How are you going to monetize it if, if you offer this to people as well? And also keeping it within like, layman's terms for new users so they like understand what's happening or like how this product works right so there's a lot going on with guac.gg and like at the base level right now you can kind of see it like forming and we talk about it you know in the docs update and the version 2 update um, and everything like that but i'm excited for essentially what comes next because even though like months and months of work have been put into version 2 i feel like we've just laid the foundation for like what is to come um, and then on the other side of the ecosystem you know we're talking about funnels all of this educational stuff, all of these fresh finds and, you know, earning and, and introducing people to like portfolio tracking and DeFi and things like that. We want to lead them to the more advanced concepts on, on guacamole.gg. And that's essentially like our Solana DeFi suite um, where you can trade, earn, play, use tools or launch. And all of these, uh, I think right now, each section has six dynamic features in itself. So like the trade section has swap, it has Riper Rotten, which is like, you know, short one minute rounds, up or down game. Uh, we have crypto futures where you can long or short soul, Jito soul, M soul, and Bitcoin. We have uh, the ability to buy uh, with card on there as well. And then we have some other things that are, you know, going live in there, like peer to peer swaps, um, which uh, avatars will get for free. Uh, and then we have aggregated liquidity pools from other platforms. And then we'll actually be launching, like I said, our own Guac AMM to support the whole backbone of our ecosystem and do that natively. Um, in the earn section, we have we currently have dynamic lending vaults from Mediora. We have uh, guacamole staking options, which we use staking options instead of traditional governance staking um, to essentially like have like a, a trade-off between the DAO itself and users. And you can read about that in, in the staking options, um, you know, documentation. And we're also about to launch tokenized NFT farms, which I think is, you know, a, a super new and novel concept. Most pe people are familiar with staking an NFT for a token, uh, but you'll actually be able to stake tokens for points to redeem a random NFT out of a pool. So it's a good way to reward people for like, you could do it with all kinds of things. So like you could do it with like radium LP tokens and reward people for with NFTs for like bootstrapping liquidity, or it could be a good way to like distribute your NFTs to like certain tokenized communities. And we're about to, to launch this product uh, with certain things like this. We like launch the interface and then we wait a little bit to make sure that everybody knows exactly when staking is going live so that nobody gets one up over the other one. Uh, so we're excited to release that soon as well. And then we have some other things in the earn section. We're about to uh, have been working on aggregated lending and borrowing from like margin five solo and things like that. Uh, the play section, I think, is like one of the most used sections because, you know, humans are, are dopamine addicts. And this is, you know, uh, verifiably random on-chain programs in partnership with Gamba. You know, we have Roulette, Dice, Flip, uh, Mines, Plinko, which is, you know, one of the Solana's first physics-based on-chain games, which is super exciting and things like that. And we, you know, we've integrated Guac, Soul, USDC, Jupe, um, you know, and we're working with a bunch of other meme communities to essentially like bootstrap LP for them as well. So they all get these, you know, native use cases of their tokens. Going back to my argument on, or like my, my opinion on being ubiquitous within the ecosystem and making sure that like your token has as many use cases. A lot of the things that we're doing with guacamole.g and even guacamole.gg and even guac.gg are for these other projects as well because if we offer these these utilities and use cases you know even like as they launch algorithmically including them when they hit certain tvl or like certain metrics and things like that and automatically making them available like you know looking at the jupe strict list versus the all token list um you know you you immediately bootstrap all of these integrations and it not only helps them out but it helps us out because now people from their community can come to our feature like our products and you know play around with their tokens learn more about things and you know explore the ecosystem in ways that they may not have understood before uh, so you know even something as simple as a play section can help out with that and then we have the tools section um you know, this is just standard stuff. We have emergency send where like if your wallet has been compromised, you can put in your wallet, connect it and immediately like transfer everything out of the wallet to a new wallet, which I think is like a severely overlooked thing and needed within the ecosystem. We have multi sender tools, you know, airdrop tools. Uh, we have closed token accounts so that you can like, you know, if you had a token account open from like two years ago on a token that you randomly traded, you can claim the soul back from rent for that account. Same thing with like burning NFTs and, and tokens. If you're familiar with like soul incinerator, 
we offer a similar product on our tool section as well. And then I think the most popular section with a lot of people lately has been launch. So we have no, this is essentially where we like go pretty hard in no code uh, token, like, you know, developer tools. So the ability to like launch an SPL token or a, a new token 2022 or token extension token, as it's now called in two minutes, just fill out a few forms, press the button, accept a few transactions and you mint your token. We also have the liquidity lockers as well, which is a little bit different than just like standard token vesting where, you know, we supply, um, going back to like, Guax uh, burning liquidity on radium, right? The way to prove that for us was just a soul scan transaction. Your average user doesn't know how to read a block explorer. It's, it's yeah, 100%. <laughs> asking them to read a foreign language, right? So the, one of the things that we wanted to focus on with the liquidity lockers was having this very transparent UI that like shows locked ratio. So shows like when the next unlock is shows how much USD value and like what portion of the pool is locked and like being able to do that for like several different LPs and LP styles as well. So like we started that with like radium and Meteora, but we've actually been in talks with Orca to provide this service in, in the next version for concentrated liquidity which I think is a huge step on Solana. So we're super excited to do that as well. And, you know, a lot of the things that I've said, we we collaborate and, and corroborate with a bunch of different protocols within Solana and beyond to be able to offer these composable products and essentially aggregate them all into one place. And the way that we do it, it, like all of our UIs, it's very, very simple. We don't try to, you know, be the NASDAQ. We don't try to like provide a centralized exchange-like experience. That's what they're for. Our job is to provide a simple, easy to follow experience for people so that people of all knowledge types, whether you have confidence and you've been doing this for years and understand, you know, paramutual options, or you're just looking to swap the latest shitcoin, you know, that, that you see in bird eye trending, uh, you can do all of that on guacamole.gg. And if you don't know how to do it, our guides will tell you how. And you'll learn and earn at the same time for doing it. <laughs> there, there's, there's, there's so much to, to, to unpack from that. But I, I would say, I mean, again, it's, it's really impressive, everything that you've built. And, and I think, you know, most people, again, it, this is not, you know, a podcast to say, hey, go and buy guac or anything like that. But go and check out these different things. Like it's, it's it, again, like I would assume somebody can go and, and look at all these different things without necessarily having to own guac to go look at them. Everything is live. Everything is permissionless. You know, go do your thing. And if you see something or you encounter something or you like, you know, think that we could do it better or that you could do it better, you know, join our discord. Talk to me. Let's like, you know, roll together. We, we accept critique at all times. And we know that like what we're doing releases in several phases for a reason, because at the end of the day, you know, we're just avocados. We have limited resources. We have limited amount of time. Time is the best thing. And, you know, all the products and features that I just described to you, I think make us like one of the, the the widest variety ecosystems that exist in all of crypto, um, you know, when it comes to like what we provide and even like from like a feature standpoint, but also like a token utility standpoint. And, you know, taking critique has helped us to essentially mold this into like what it's become. We always joke about, you know, in, in Discord and internally where, you know, the support channel is like popping off and people sometimes think that like they get overlooked, but I can guarantee that every single comment that goes into that channel gets written in a book. And I actually have like the book in my backpack over there. Um, and like we look through that all the time to make sure that like the next iterations or like bug fixes are, are what they should be because at the end of the day you know we go back to like one of the first things i said is guacamole is an experiment um, and you know we're looking at it from an outside perspective sometimes and sometimes you have to like tear your own work apart to get it to the next best iteration and that's like one of the things that's important would be too uh, so going back to to how i described it is laying the foundation with version two uh, to be able to build all of this in the future and like introduce our AMM and introduce these, these uh, SaaS models that I was talking about with like the no code plugins. And then we talk about version four, which, you know, I won't, I won't talk about today, but that's when it all culminates. And if people think that like we're building this, this huge wide variety of features to not like culminate them into like one specific engine that can be like interactive for everything, you'd be highly naive. Uh, there are long-term plans here to make guacamole into something that the industry hasn't seen before. Um, and I'm super excited for that. And, you know, we have a long road ahead of us with, you know, what comes next and, and fixing things now and making sure that like we show up every day, but we've been building since day one, right? So like we go back to like guacamole, $6 million market cap first two days. And then for months, it, it wouldn't even go above three or 400 and, you know, discord had a few people in it. Uh, you know, we'd get some engagement on socials. People essentially didn't want to work with guacamole because they thought that we were over after our like native rise. But the one difference was that like we showed up every day, every day 
updates every day built alongside the community followed exactly what we're going to say if we said we were going to do something it was delivered and it was delivered on time and it was delivered in the manner that it should have been delivered in and this comes from experience within the industry you know you don't do this for a decade and not know how to like talk about the product that you're going to make and then deliver it um and you know you see the 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 organic growth over time and going back to it like no one's ever been paid to do anything you know it's all skin in the game people just get excited about what we're doing and i think that's like one of the best things about guacamole is like you know (laughs) it's fresh it's organic and um you know, going back to the playful branding, it helps us essentially be what we want to be on any single day, but follow our mission. hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. So I got a last few questions for you, but I think this has been awesome. I mean, again, I think this is incredibly thorough and like, I, th- I, yeah, I'm excited to see what people think of this whole conversation. Cause I think it's, again, it's impressive everything that you've built and, um, it, the way that you look at what you're building and the purpose of them and the ways that you're educating new people and the ways that you're, um, you know, uh, allowing the, I mean, you're building things that benefit the ecosystem. That's always super beneficial. So the question I have for you next is you've mentioned a few times the avatars. So what can you tell me about those? What was the, what was the kind of rationale for creating those and, and what is the goal of those? Sure. Yeah, so uh, the avatars weren't necessarily supposed to be like on the art side of NFTs. There, there are two sides of NFTs, and I've even heard you talk about like with this with Frank as well. When it's like, our NFTs are either considered art or are considered social avatars, right? And that's essentially why they are called the avatars. It's a nice, playful branding word on avocados and an avatar. And it was our way in the middle of the slump to kind of gain traction when it comes to social representation. There was no way to essentially social represent guac without just like tagging guac in a post, and that you know kind of gets overdone and overlooked etc so this was our way to kind of bring excitement back to the community and you know we uh we actually this did this huge marketing campaign where you know we airdropped this avo token to like mad lads and okay bears and like clanos and like a bunch of other projects and like people were kind of like setting guac aside at the time and um the avatar token was redeemable for a free avatar all you had to do was go and burn it for the avatar during mint and you got a free avatar um, and then the community d- uh, actually decided to vote um, to mint the avatars in guac. I think it was like four billion guac at the time, which was like, I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. It was like equivalent to like 0.9 soul when we when we minted. Um, and then you could even mint in 0.9 soul. And we were like one of the first platforms that actually offered like three different ways to mint an NFT at the same time, which was like technologically crazy i've built all these like different protocols and like you know managed out layer one ecosystems and it was like being able to like introduce three different minting mechanisms and have them work on like you know the new metaplex standard was an interesting uh mission in itself Uh, but we got through it and we you know um have introduced multiple different facets of the avatar uh ecosystem over time you know if you're unfamiliar with it it's like cute little avocados um and Going back to Pitfolio, you can currently set your avatar uh, on Pitfolio, and and we've you know kind of hinted at you getting special rewards or rewards boosts for doing that. So if you haven't done that yet, I would definitely recommend doing that. Uh, you also get special roles on Guac.gg for doing it, and in our Discord server as well that give you access to certain things. Uh, we do track all of that for extra reward points. Uh, or holding an avatar also gives you uh, trading rebates on like crypto futures and things like that. And then I kind of hinted earlier at like some of the things that are in the docs with like, you know, the peer to peer uh, swaps being free for avatars and things like that. And one of the things that like I will preface is because this is guacamole and I want people to understand that guac will always be number one, right? The avatars are a way to extend the ecosystem into the world of NFTs, which I think is just as important. And while we, I feel that we don't offer as many NFT tools as we should right now, and we will soon, um, avatars, I think, are like the base and like the start to us continuing to do that. Um, so I love the art avatars. I was actually like one of the main artists on the avatars. Uh, you know, communication design kind of like overlaps with traditional art. You do a lot, of, a lot of art school and, and build portfolios and things like that. And we took some some influence from other projects, and we wanted it to be playful. We wanted it to be fun, uh, so that you know you were excited to represent. Um, you know, on the timeline with something that was like cute and, and and things like that, because it then it can extend to families. And I have people within the ecosystem where like their kids love their avatar and, and things like that. Uh, but I think going forward, you'll see a lot more integrations and use cases for the avatars. Uh, but, you know, just always expect that, you know, the guac token will be will be number one. No, that's cool. I mean, that's uh, I remember that was one of the first ways that I kind of found out about avocado was uh, not one of the first ways, but I guess like seeing people posting the avocado actual avatars 
cars and, and things like that. And it was, so it was a cool way to kind of be introduced to the community and who was actually holding and things like that. So, um, from there, I know you've talked a lot already so far about, um, you know, some of the things that you have coming this year and everything like that, but what sort of alpha can you leave us with? Um, what should people be looking forward to this year with avocado and everything that you guys are building or with, uh, <laughs> I take that now, now I'm screwed up. Now I'm screwed up. <laughs> avocado, guacamole, yeah, guacamole, avatar. It's all every, everything that you guys are building right now with guac. Um, what should people expect this year? Yeah. So I think that we've already solidified the, pa- the fact that like guacamole and the internal team, the Dow and even the community is full of builders. Uh, and we're very, very resilient and we're here to push forward with our plans. I think, you know, looking at uh, what our community is now calling the, bl- the blue ocean uh, and everything that like we can expand this into, because if you look at like the foundation that we've laid with both of these applications and how we can build further on it, we can introduce concepts that necessarily aren't haven't been like worked on or, or integrated before because we've, we're essentially expanding into like everything that, you know, specifically Solana will be good at. You know, we have we'll have gaming integrations, you know, we have the e-commerce integration. We we are advancing our DeFi suite. We're you know advancing our education portal, our consumer apps. You know we're offering them as we just started offering uh, Guac.gg as like a PWA, and we're working actually on offering both apps as unique applications on the Solana DApp Store. Uh, we are big fans of the Saga. You know Intern owns one, and we can't wait for Saga Two to come out. And we're we're working closely with that to make sure that we offer native experiences. We're also you know working a little bit on on offering some things in like Backpack as XNFTs to essentially not only make the Guac token ubiquitous but make our applications ubiquitous within solana and beyond i think that you'll also see um you know when we talk about like the traditional marketing strategies that we're employing that uh, you know we've um, just provide a little feedback like using these same strategies i've grown e-commerce stores to two million visits per month without any paid advertising Right. So it's very, very important for us to be able to include these and, and essentially represent the guacamole ecosystem in this way. And, you know, some of this takes some time to catch on and trend um, and gain traction based on like how the algorithms work and, you know, how crawlers work. And we're excited to see this continue forward. But the data that we're collecting and we'll eventually make this data public as well for people to show like how the system and strategies work. Um, we're, we're already seeing some traction with that even like a week after B2 is launched. And that's super, super exciting to me. Um, I, I will leave off saying that like, you know, one of the things that, that we want to do is make things not only easier for the end user and new people onboarding at Solana, but also make things easier for project founders as well and other ecosystem teams. So, if, you know, if you're looking for integrations, if you're looking for help with things, I can guarantee there are multiple features or products within our ecosystem that you can automatically use. If you want it in, in, uh, if you want an integration somewhere, just reach out and ask. And, you know, we'll be starting to do these other algorithmically as well, like buying things in the marketplace with other the tokens we're super excited to start introducing that you know playing with other tokens uh, rewards for other tokens and even expanding the rewards point system that we're integrating to being able to claim other tokens and expanding it to the DeFi suite as well where like you'll be able to you know a lot of people are, are usually familiar with like the daily missions within video games and things like that like call of duty fortnite things we'll actually be inter- integrating some daily missions in both of the applications which i think is super exciting to gamify the experience further uh, so you know look out for that to be able to earn extra rewards look out for the next DAO proposal, which we're formulating now, and then you know, going back to our latest DAO proposal number six, which was like when listing, you know, talking about BitGet and things like that, and the the journey doesn't end there for that. There are there are ongoing things, and I've talked about the, this to the community as well, where you have to always look at things from a long term point of view, and taking everything that we want to do, and jamming it into one week doesn't help us, you know, deliver it in the best way, make sure that, you know, whatever content or, you know, outcome from each thing is, is, is uh, garnered and, and established and we can collect data from like what works and what did in an AB test, because if you release everything at once, you know, with marketing and new content and everything like that, it's hard to test exactly what worked, right? So we space these things out and you can look forward to more things, more integrations, more markets, things like that for guacamole, you know, you can look forward to more interviews as well. Uh, super excited. I love talking about guacamole. I'm only, uh, I wake up every day, you know, and I, I do other things as well. You know, I still have um, participation in the trading firm and like designing trading products, which, you know, are, are super advanced in millions of lines of code. And that's super fun. Uh, you know, I, I work sometimes, uh, uh, I, I have, a, you know, a little take in, in mechanical engineering as well and help to, you know, fabricate things for space shuttles uh, on the side. I, you know, and guacamole, um, you know, I wake up every day super excited to uh, participate in this ecosystem and build. And, you know, even on the hard days, it's, it's, I wouldn't want to do anything else. And I think that like, if you can wake up every day and, and do something that you're super excited about and, you know, 
for me, it's kind of like seeing this experiment out um, and following Guacamole, you know, and building it into into version four, which, you know, our top secret um, Guacamole, you know, interaction engine and things like that. Um, there's a lot of hard work in front of us, but it's it's a daily battle uh, and I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else when it comes to like the main contributors that I have alongside me. Huge shout out to the Avocadao, huge shout out to the community because, you know, I, I've partaked in a lot of different communities over the years and I'm excited to build the the drastically, you know, <laughs> in-depth community that we have now whether you're like one of our resident trolls or like one of our resident like moon boys uh you know just know that i love you and like you do your job within the community just fine and everybody can be themselves and you know we're excited to grow alongside you and take your criticism and feedback and and essentially make guacamole into something that you know both the crypto niche that we live in on crypto twitter and the world beyond hasn't seen before by looking at it from an outside view and and introducing a fresh take to how it's done there we go. There we go. That's a drop the bike moment right there. Um, yeah, man. No, I'm looking forward to it. And hopefully uh, you'll be back on the podcast at some point this year telling me about some of the new things that you guys have rolled out and how that experience has gone and, and uh, you know, some of the ups and downs and everything of, of uh, you know, working in this space. So, uh, but dude, I appreciate you coming on. I know we're uh, we're going to IRL Alpha tonight. You're speaking there. Uh, by the time this is out, you know, that'll already be over, but people can go on YouTube too and watch that. Um, and no, it's, it's, it's really cool to be able to hear everything that you're doing and how thorough it is um, because again I think when people think about different coins and stuff like that it's it's so quick to it's so easy to call something a shit coin but what you've built out and what you and the team have built out is an entire ecosystem um, and it's incredibly exciting to see and, and I, I think raises the bar for everybody else as to what they should be doing um, and what's what's capable and possible so um, dude again I really appreciate you having this conversation can you drop your socials where can people find you at yeah so one of the things with guacamole is that we don't want a, a specific face attached to the product we want it to be the ecosystem as a whole so if you're interested in anything that we do which just at guac underscore gg on twitter uh the websites you know guac.gg is the consumer app guacamole.gg is the DeFi application docs.guacamole.gg is the documentation as well our discord um you know our telegram everything is available in our twitter or slash x's bio we have a bento page that hosts everything bento.me slash guac it's a it's a cooler more design friendly version of linktree you should check it out uh but we have everything on there join the community you know come shit uh, shit talk with intern. Um, you know, I, I'm always available to answer any questions, anything like that. And I'm always super excited to see new community members join and, uh, provide their feedback for our ecosystem. There we go. There we go. Well, hey man, appreciate you coming on and, uh, yeah, again, excited for the uh, future of guac and everything that you guys are building out. Um, and, uh, and again, thank you for contributing to the Solana space. It's always cool to see stuff like this. And, and, uh, we've come a long way in the, in the three years that I've been here. It's, uh, it's very exciting to see. So, um, thank you for raising the bar for everybody else and, uh, everybody else. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we got a fun year ahead of us. Scoop the dip. Scoop the dip. Scoop the dip. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm a big avocado fan. I eat guacamole on a regular basis. So Mark's always, ripped. You only get that rip with avocados, man. You know, <laughs> avocados are where it's at. I'll eat a pure raw avocado. Yeah. Like people, I guess everybody kind of eats raw avocados. But like I'll literally just cut an avocado in half and just eat it. Like, you just eat it skin and all like like an not apple. Not the skin, not the right? skin, not the skin. But. Mark eats avocados like <laughs> apples. He doesn't know that was my cousin. <laughs> Oh man, loving the costume, loving all of this. Um and uh and yeah, hey, go go get this is this is the real alpha. Take a, an avocado, cut it in half, put a little everything bagel seasoning on that thing and it's good to go. Just eat that boy right just as is. Balsamic glaze. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I like that idea too. That's okay, a little balsamic, balsamic glaze. glaze, salt and pepper is all you need in your life on an avocado. Boom, there we go. But you got to make sure it's perfectly ripe. Yeah. Yeah. There's, ripe, not rotten. Yeah. Yeah. You got to make sure you give it a squeeze. Make sure it's a little, it's a little tender, but not too, you know, and you got to make sure you got to get that perfectly ripe. Avocado. Part two of the podcast, how to eat or determine if an avocado is ripe or rotten. <laughs> See that you it. back here in an hour. There we go. There we go. <laughs> everybody, thank you for tuning in. And uh, dude, again, appreciate you coming out and we'll talk to everybody later. Thanks guys. See you guys.